Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hello Adrian the podcast. Listen, y'all have been on it with these questions, so we are going to get right into it. And you know what? I'm not looking at my watch this time. Thank you. Okay, so this question says, being new to the dating game after being married for so long, how do you go about introducing the person you are dating to your family slash children? Okay, so this is a, well, it's not really a hard one, but you really have to do what's best for you. It really depends a lot upon your children's ages, um, and let me stop and say, I am no expert. This is just, this has been my experience. Um, with, I've been in a couple of, I can say that candidly, I've been in a couple of relationships since I have divorced and, um, both of those people met my children. However, the last relationship that I was in, I promised myself that, um, I would wait. And I, I think I waited a pretty good amount of time and, um, but you know, that's for, for me, it was a little different because, you know, my children had only seen me with their dad, like ever. So, well, their whole lives. So, um, I was a little hesitant, um, but my children are older right now. They are 23, 20 and 18. So, you know, they're many adults. Um, but it, it's, it really just depends but I had said that I wouldn't until I knew, like, just for certain that um, that the relationship was going somewhere, that was when I would introduce them. So what had happened was, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, it really, it really, really just depends on, on you, your children. I think if my children were smaller, if they were younger, then I would be a whole lot more reserved I think um, there was a time when I was oops let me stop with this there was a time when I was actually um, like dating you know like I had a you know it, I was going out on dates with different people and you know that was fun but I think only my girlfriends and my close my really close guy friends knew you know, like who I was with, or I would, I wouldn't even tell my parents. I would just say, hey, you know, I'm going out and I have my safety measures in place. I would drop my location. Um, that's a good one we could do too, because these were th like, I'm, now I'm talking about different stuff, but I'm thinking I should do one on like dating safety tips, like things that I just didn't know to do because I had always been in a relationship. So I've never had to, I never had to do these things that I, you know, had to learn at 38 plus. So, um, but I would let like my people know who I was with and where I was. I even went so far as to, you know, send phone numbers and stuff. So, you know, just to, just to stay safe. But my children never, never knew, well, they knew I was going out, but they didn't know with whom or where, you know? So, but that, like I said, that's because they're older. Um, had, it, had they been smaller, it, it just, probably would have been a lot. I think I think I would have handled it handled it a little bit differently because, you know, they were younger. Um even now like since like I'm trying not to say too much, but uh yeah. Um I really hope that that answers the question. Um it really just depends. I think with the first person I dated it was a few months or so but when I go back and start really talking about the things that I actually went through and had to learn in my relationships I can I can say that I did things a little too fast because I was so used to being in a relationship that you know I was trying to I just went too fast I mean so I think I did things a little bit a little too fast but I learned from that so the next time around, it, it was like a whole different set of circumstances and people met people quickly, but only because they were kind of around is, yeah. So, um, but still, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't live with regrets. I'd never lose. I learned and I did learn. 
So yeah, it really just depends. Um, but I think once you see that the relationship is going somewhere, like it's more than just dating, then I think, I think it's okay to introduce like in stages, you know, I have a friend who started dating and her children called her boyfriend, they called him ghost because they had only heard him talk. I want to say it, it, they only heard him talk and didn't see him, like heard him on the phone or something and never saw him until she knew that it was going somewhere. And then, you know, she introduced the children to him. But I thought that was like the funniest thing that they were calling him ghost. And yes, that's a nod to like ghost. But anyway, um, so yeah, once you see that it's going somewhere, I think it's it's good to introduce, but kind of do it slowly, especially if especially if they're younger. And then especially if like in my case, where my children had only known their dad, I was I didn't want them to think, even if they're they're older, even when I divorced, they were older, but still, I didn't want them to think that somebody was kind of trying to come in trying to replace him. I didn't know what their thoughts were on that and I talked about that with them and you know we have really candid conversations now I wonder if my children will come on here and be really candid with me they may uh, we have a very uh, we have a very good relationship so we really talk about the dynamics of you know their mom dating someone especially when it's a little more serious than you know like a date so I hope that answered the question. I'm trying to think. Um, so yeah, I kind of said that already. Just you have to do it, I think do it slowly. Um, when you start introducing family members, like I still have people that I talk to that are family with like an ex because they just cool people. Like you cool, I like you. I see you out and I still hug you. I'm like, hey girl, how you doing? You know, because it's it was a genuine, you know, friendship that was formed. Now, do we talk every single solitary day? Heck no. But, you know, when I see you, I'm, I'm really happy to see you. And then when you have children involved, you know, children become friends and they're innocent in the whole thing. So I still have a great relationship with, you know, kids that have been involved. And so do my children. And I, I actually love that because I want them to, you know, continue to nurture those friendships that were, you know, kind of brought in, if that makes sense. I think um, it's a little different for me, like I said, because my children are older. So, you know, they go and, and hang out and it has nothing to do with me, but I'm like, hey, I'm glad to see you if they come here because they're friends with my son or whatever, that's great because, you know, it's like, hey, or I'm seeing you on Instagram or something, or I'll send you a text message to check on you because those those relationships are, they're pure, they're, they're innocent, and children are always innocent in relationships. So um, when you feel like it's time, you know, you have to do what's best for you. And what I don't, and that's why I always say I'm not a professional or not a, you know, uh, I'm not licensed in this. It's just my life experience. I don't want to ever say, oh, you shouldn't do this because you have to do what works best for you. And you have to do what, really what you want to do for you and not let the decision that you make be because of someone else. Like, oh, I'm not going to do this because, you know, my parents are going to be upset. You grown, right? I mean, I understand I'm a daddy's girl and, and I love my mom, but when it all, when it's all said and done, I have to do what's best for Adrian. So if Adrian feels like it's okay to introduce, you know, someone to my children or my family or my parents, then you best believe that I've prayed about it. I've thought about it. I have journaled about it. I have overanalyzed it to pieces and this is what I've come up with. I've made a list, I've checked it twice, I've done pros, I've done cons, I've weighed it all. So yeah, this is more of like a ramble, I guess. I don't know, but I hope I answered the question. It's really, it's really up to you. You have to decide and not let 
too many people get in your ear. Now, I, I can understand. I have people that I bounce ideas off of, but they are like close knit. And I know for a fact that they have my best interest at heart. And they're not amen friends. Like they're not just going to co-sign on anything I say. And for that, I am grateful because I can get a lot. I can go a little left sometimes. You know, you have to have those friends that kind of pull you back in. And I'm the same way with my friends. I'm not that amen friend. I will tell you, you know, hey, you about to mess up or um you might want to rethink that because that's you know but even with that they still have to do what's best for them i'm just going to tell them you know my perspective from the outside looking in sometimes it's hard to see um it's hard to see the situation when you're in it i've been there a lot i think i said that on a, an episode or so ago i was too close i was in the two what is it two I couldn't see the forest for the trees and I really couldn't because I was in it. But when you get out of it, you know, hindsight is 2020. You can always see things so much clearer when you are not in that situation. So, um, yeah, have some people around you that can actually advise you and not stay away from that. If I was you, I would, you're not me. And if you haven't, Sometimes I feel like if you haven't had to make that decision before, you don't really know. However, I will say that they may, you know, people may not have gone through it, but maybe they've seen someone go through it and they can say, well, hey, I've not been through it, but I remember when I saw X, Y, and Z and this is how they handled it. So I think, you know, always, I think you can look at the things that other people have done and, you know, also try to make a decision but pray about it. If you feel good about it, you know, trust your gut. If your gut does not lie, don't ignore <laughs> your intuition. Like it's, is normally, my intuition is normally on point. And where I mess up is when I ignore something thinking, mm, no, nah, that ain't it. Oh, boo boo, yes, that's it. So I hope I answered your question. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please feel free to email us at helloadrian one at gmail.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Tell somebody about the podcast. Let me know what you think. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>